as if you were the first lottery millionaire of 2001. So we better get ourselves ready to enjoy all the fun. Enjoy the rest of the evening. What kept you? We'll see you at 1145. Cheery bye. It's cold out there. News now on BBC One Scotland with Hugh Edwards. Weather brings chaos to some of the New Year's celebrations. Snow, ice, blizzards, and now the experts are warning of floods. Princess Margaret is unwell and undergoing medical tests, according to the palace. And after 12 months of controversy, the Millennium Dome has seen its last visitors. New Year celebrations across the country are being badly disrupted and some cancelled because of the severe cold weather. Forecast as a warning of more to come and advise tonight's party goers to stay indoors. Freezing temperatures, heavy snow, severe gales and blizzards are expected to lead to widespread flooding and a short while ago the Met Office issued yet another severe weather warning. Months of preparations have been ruined by 24 hours of atrocious weather. In Liverpool, they've spent the day dismantling a giant stage. Plans for an open-air concert and a fireworks display have been cancelled. The weather's been this. The, the wind and the snow that's on its way, a blizzard we're doing told by the Met Office. We just decided on grounds of public safety we had to cancel. In Belfast, an open-air concert and light show have been cancelled. A smaller event is taking place indoors. Strong winds and driving rain have ruined street parties and other outdoor events in towns and cities across Britain. The icy conditions have already claimed one life. In Cornwall, a man died when his car hit a wall near Bodmin. After the heavy snowfall of recent days, this afternoon blizzards swept through Wales and north and central England. In Yorkshire, even main roads were impassable. Motorists trying to cross the moors had to abandon their journeys. In the Brecon Beacons in Mid Wales, this family were trapped in their vehicle for several hours before the emergency services reached them. Mountain rescue teams have been towing stranded cars to safety. We've now got uh, horizontal snow and uh, conditions are very bad driving through the beacons. Ready. <laughs> In Norfolk, marshland has frozen over. This kind of New Year entertainment is a rare experience. More rain and strong winds are moving through the country, but weathermen say milder temperatures are also on the way, bringing with them the risk of flooding. Lisa Holland, BBC News. Buckingham Palace confirmed tonight that Princess Margaret is unwell and has undergone medical tests, but she's not been admitted to hospital. The Queen's sister, who is 70, has been confined to bed over Christmas and the past week, was seen by a doctor yesterday and earlier today. The Princess, who was 70 in August, has never truly recovered from the stroke she suffered nearly two years ago. She gets tired very easily and sometimes becomes confused. Now doctors are trying to establish why she's been feeling unwell over the Christmas period by carrying out a series of tests. The princess is in bed at Sandringham and has not been admitted to hospital. When she failed to appear with other members of the royal family at church on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, the palace said she was feeling tired. Now though it's clear that there's more to it. After her stroke in 1998 on the Caribbean island of Mustique, she was flown home and spent two weeks in hospital. Although she recovered most of her mobility, she's said to have become very depressed. And that was exacerbated when she severely scalded her feet in an accident in the bath a year later. It was months before the bandages could be removed, and the princess was forced to use a wheelchair to carry out the few engagements she slowly took on. At her mother's 100th birthday celebrations in the summer, Princess Margaret looked better than she had for some time. But the fact that palace officials have now issued a statement about her health is a cause for concern, though they say not for immediate alarm. Jenny Bond, BBC News. 
The Millennium Dome has closed to the public for the last time, a year to the day after it opened. More than 27,000 people flocked to the Dome today, pushing its visitor numbers up towards 6.5 million. That makes it Britain's top tourist attraction, despite all the criticism and the ever-present financial crisis. Nick Hyam has been in Greenwich to see the Dome's last day. I would like to thank, finally, you, the members of the public, the 6.5 million people that made this happen. Thank you for your trust. We love you. Thank you. The Dome's boss bringing down the curtain tonight at the end of a turbulent year for the centrepiece of the Millennium Happy celebrations. New Happy New Year. Thank you. At the Dome, the past year proved anything but happy. It opened in chaos, with VIP guests forced to queue for hours to get through security at Stratford Station. Behind the scenes, the past 12 months saw management sackings near bankruptcy and appalling media coverage. The original target of 12 million visitors proved hopelessly unrealistic. But the French boss still thinks it's a success. I hope the Dome will be remembered for a fantastic fighting team that turned around a product and made it a world-class attraction. Remember, almost 70% of the people that come here say Britain should be proud of this thing. The Gerbo Zone proved among the most popular attractions today. The relentlessly upbeat PY has become a celebrity since he took over in February. But outside, the political attacks continued. A Conservative government may have dreamt up the dome, but today the Tories think the £628 million it cost in lottery subsidy was simply too much. The dome closed with the final 999th performance of the spectacular show in the central arena. Tomorrow, the show's cast, like most of the dome's staff, will be out of a job. These are among the last people to leave the dome. 27,000 were here today. Almost all seem to be leaving happy. Almost all are sad that it's closing. I thought it was great. It's the second time I've been and I really enjoyed it. Whatever people have said, you don't know unless you've been. It was lovely. Very nice. It was good. Yeah. I just hope the dome goes on and on and on and on because I think it's just magnificent. Bye now. The last visitors gone, they shut the doors for the last time. The Dome's future promises to be less exciting. If all goes to plan, it'll be turned into a high-tech business park. Nick Hyam, BBC News, at the Millennium Dome. Tensions in the Middle East have escalated further. A Palestinian group has admitted responsibility for shooting dead a Jewish settlers leader and his wife and injuring five of their children. Shortly afterwards, a senior Palestinian official was shot dead in the West Bank. Only 12 hours after they had been murdered, the bodies of Binyamin Kehana and his wife Talia were being taken for burial through the streets of Jerusalem. The violence of Kehana's death mirrored the violence of his opinions and inevitably there was violence as the funeral procession went through the streets. Camera crews were attacked, including ours. Outside the official residence of the Prime Minister, Ehud Barak, the crowd demonstrated their fury that his government hadn't prevented these deaths. Kehana's father, Rabbi Meir Kehana, was also murdered a decade ago. The extremist movement he and his son led was banned in Israel after one of its members massacred 29 Palestinians. Over and above the anger at Kehana's death is another anger, that the Israeli government should think of doing a deal with the people who killed him. What's happening here is that the tensions within Israeli society are surfacing. But the killing of a leading Palestinian official, Tabet Tabet, by Israeli soldiers may cause equal trouble. An angry demonstration was told this was the latest in a planned series of assassinations of prominent Palestinians. Today's events may well have serious consequences. John Simpson, BBC News, Jerusalem. The former Conservative Deputy Prime Minister Michael Heseltine has warned that Britain faces a serious problem because of the number of people seeking asylum here. He said many were bogus claimants and were taking homes and services away from British citizens. A government minister said the remarks were ill-informed, but the Home Office has admitted that far fewer asylum seekers are being dispersed around the country than had been originally planned. Barely an hour and a half to go for us, but millions of people are already well into 2001 and they've been celebrating with enthusiasm. Sydney Harbour Bridge was ablaze with fireworks as Australians also began to celebrate their country's 100th birthday. Emma Simpson has been rounding up the celebrations worldwide.
Sydney saw in the new year with a bang. Thousands watched the spectacular fireworks display over Australia's most famous landmark. Here, they're also celebrating a special birthday. The grand finale signalling the start of Australia's centenary year. rang in the new year with temple bells in Tokyo, followed by a traditional release of balloons. On the other side of the world, the New Year celebrations are well underway. And tonight in Moscow, the familiar gathering in Red Square and freezing sub-zero temperatures. Back home, the severe weather hasn't managed to put a stop to all the preparations, and Edinburgh, the home of Hogmanay, is still gearing up for a big night. Everything's set for a great street party here in Edinburgh. It's going to be a cold night, uh, so people should wrap up warm, but we're expecting 100,000 people here in Princess Street to celebrate the new year. In Bristol, they've been laying fuses for fireworks, one of more than 30 cities sharing £6 million worth of lottery cash to party across the UK tonight. It's a very different story in London, though. The familiar crowd barriers may be up, but political wranglings meant Mayor Livingston's big celebrations have been cancelled. London boroughs like Greenwich are hosting small attractions instead. Emma Simpson, BBC News. And the latest now from our correspondents at the New Year celebrations in Edinburgh, Cardiff and in London to Edinburgh first and Andrew Castle. Andy. You, despite that pretty appalling weather, you can probably tell the party's in full swing here in Edinburgh. It's really the culmination of five days of festive fun, carnivals, torchlight processions, concerts, ice skating, that sort of thing, and there's more to come. And of course, at midnight from the ramparts of this great castle behind me, a spectacular fireworks show which will be repeated at about six hills outside the city. And there's about 100,000 people here. We've had a few reports of minor uh, injuries, but many, many reports of people Thank having so fun, which I guess Gareth Jones in Cardiff is what it's all about. Certainly is. Uh, that's why actually quite a few people, several hundred thousand in fact, or several thousand actually, have turned up here uh, at Cardiff's Kalenig Festival. Now Kalenig is the Welsh for New Year's gift. Uh, I imagine a lot of people here though will be uh, thinking that they, the, the elements really ought to have been a bit kinder to them tonight. Uh, the rain is easing up though, people are dancing in the streets, so things I think are on the up here. Now over to Emma at London Eye. Yes, the Millennium Wheel is turning tonight. That's something you probably wouldn't notice from here. Something it didn't do during last year's Millennium celebrations. And there are some lucky competition winners who will be treated to a spectacular midnight ride tonight. But that's about it for the capital. There's not a lot going on here this evening. The mood is about as damp as the weather. There's a lot of people in town, a lot of party goers, but there's really nowhere for them to go or nothing to do. There's certainly no fireworks or fanfare in central London tonight, Hugh. Emma, thank you very much, and thank you, Gareth and Andrew, too. And before we go, let's have a quick look at Trafalgar Square. As the crowds gather there to greet 2001, uh, some 90 minutes to go, despite the advice to avoid central London, police are still expecting 100,000 people to come along in any case. Now, BBC News 24 will be following the New Year celebrations worldwide throughout the night. But from us, have a good night, have a good time tonight, and keep warm, and above all, have a happy and healthy New Year. Bye for now.
Good evening to you. After the freeze comes the flood, and we've got some heavy rain around at the moment, and that combined with the thaw is going to give some localised flooding. Not only is, but has. We have one river on severe flood warning already, and there may well be others in the very near future, because look at that rain on the radar. It's not only rain, it is still giving some snow and blizzard conditions over the higher hills in northern England and parts of Scotland, but the whole lot's going to move away during the night and leave behind some rather misty, murky, drizzly conditions, although there will be some quite heavy showers packing onto those western coasts. Temperatures rising all the while, getting milder and milder as the night goes on. Tomorrow will dawn grey and misty and perhaps damp and drizzly, I think, in many places. Already in the west it'll be brighter with some sunny intervals and showers, and it'll tend to brighten up, I think, in some of other areas as the day wears on, more particularly in central and southern parts, although there will be a scattering of showers. Much, much milder tomorrow, not as windy either. Temperatures eventually climbing to eight or nine degrees or so. And then, in a way, we're back to square one, back to the sort of weather that we had all too frequently before Christmas. Because when we look ahead to Tuesday, it's going to be a fairly mild and breezy day, admittedly. There'll be showers and longer outbreaks of rain across many parts of the country, a band of rain working its way across during the course of the day. And even into Wednesday, I think we're going to find that uh, it remains unsettled. If there is any rain around, it's more likely to be in southern areas, perhaps a little bit brighter in the more northern parts, some scattered bursts of rain in the northwest. That's all from me. Despite the weather, have a very happy new year. Seventh time in seven weeks. Is this my life? Oh, almost forgot. We've got to smash up Kenny's car, haven't we? A friend in need. There are times when I wish you were a girl. Yeah, nuisance there, isn't it? Is a friend indeed. I wish you were my real dad. And with nothing to lose. We need to bring a young family to the island. Hey, Kenny, look at this. Hebridean? Is that like close to a beefer? A new life beckons. You got an interview? Oh, you got an interview? Yes. Well, they must be desperate. I just want you to pretend that Kenny's your dad. No. But how long can they live a lie? Yeah, all right. 2,000 Acres of Sky begins tomorrow at 8.30, BBC One Scotland.